My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, we acknowledge our sins as we ask the Lord's pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Plead for us at the right hand of God our Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we, who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods beside me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above, or on the earth below, or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, and bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done by either you or your son or daughter, by your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, or his ox or ass, or anything that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you, you have, have the words, words of, of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you, you have, have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, Lord you have, have the words of everlasting, everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you, you have, have the words of everlasting, everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords, drove them out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, spilled the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recall the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? but he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the words Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all, and did not need anyone to testify about human nature, he himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in Christ, today in the Gospel we hear of this very strange practice of money changers and oxen and sheep and doves in the temple precinct. Strange to our modern ears, and yet very much an ordinary part of Jewish life at the time of Jesus. And the Lord's reaction to it provides to you and me a great spiritual challenge in our own time and life. For not only were the, those practices Ordinary, they were actually prescribed by the law. You see, there were services given to the pilgrims who came to the temple. The money changers, because Roman and Greek money was considered impure and ineligible to be offered as a sacrifice in the temple. And so they would change it for coins, temple coinage, that could be used. Again, a service to worshippers no different than those who sold doves. That was for those who were poor, who could not afford an oxen or a sheep, to allow them to sacrifice according to their means. Again, it was a service provided to the poor and those who came to worship. So on the surface, they were doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing. 
But surfaces, my friends, are deceiving. One could say this is the great episode in the Lord's life where he reminds us that it is not enough to do the right thing unless we also have the right reason or motive behind doing it. For Jesus, who could read human hearts, saw clearly that while they were doing what they were supposed to do, they were doing it for all the wrong reasons. They were doing it for self-aggrandizement, for profit, to lord it over those who came to them, perhaps even to extort them. And so the Lord threw them out because... He knew what was truly motivating what ostensibly looked like perfect, moral, religious conduct. So you can glimpse, my friends, what the challenge is for you and for me. You and I, my friends, we try to be good and we try to do what is good and right, that which we have been taught by our faith, by our parents, by those who have helped raise us, for those we have met in our lives. But it would be foolish for you and me to believe that every time we do what is right, we do it for the right reason. You see, many times, most times, perhaps every time, there are mixed motives in my heart and yours. The scripture speaks of a gift of purity of heart. For almost all of us, that is a work in progress. And while on one hand we may intend the things we do for noble, faithful purposes, summarized in the Decalogue we heard in the first reading, which is the motivation that should be behind all that we do, love of God and love of neighbor, in fact, many a time, there are other motivations that sneak their way in. Gratification, pride, self-centeredness. I want the attention. I want to be noticed. I want to make a name for myself. And you and I, as Christian disciples of the Lord, need to be both aware of those motivations when they arise in our hearts, and to ever more purify that heart. To be on guard for the tendency to make that which we do ostensibly good, to avoid making it for our benefit, but rather it is for the benefit of the worship of the God to whom we owe everything, and the love of our neighbor, those known and unknown in our midst. And perhaps, as part of your Lenten practice and mine, we can rediscover the power of examining our consciences each day to not only ask ourselves, do we do what was right today, but to ask the ever more important question, did we do it with the right motivation, with the right intent, with ever greater purity of heart? For if we do not plant the seeds of our good deeds in the bed of good intent, pure motivation, for the love of God in our neighbor, those seeds, those good acts, will not yield the fruit they were destined to. They may yield no fruit at all. I often wonder to myself, This episode in the Lord's life is narrated in all four Gospels. And here in his righteous anger, it is clear what the Lord is telling them. You must get out until you know why it is the Lord is asking you to do these things and to do it in his will. You know, I often wonder to myself, as they were going home with their money bags on their sides and the animals in tow, walking away from the temple, perhaps asking themselves, what did we do wrong? Perhaps the answer to that question lies in the quiet of their hearts. Perhaps it's a question you and I in this Lent should have the courage to ask. 
ourselves. We profess our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker Lord, of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us place our intentions and our needs before the Lord. First, let us pray for Pope Francis as he continues his apostolic journey to Iraq, a country that has known great suffering, war, and strife, a country in which many Christians have fled and the church is oftentimes persecuted. That the Spirit of the Lord will protect our Holy Father as he continues his journey of hope, and lift up the people of Iraq that they may find and enjoy a life of peace and that the Christians in their midst may be protected and be able in freedom to worship their Lord and Savior. For all this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the leaders of governments around the world that they may be women and men committed to allow all God's children to live in prosperity, justice, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for an end of the pandemic in our midst. As we do each Sunday, we remember those who are sick and suffering from the coronavirus. We pray for the protection and health of our healthcare workers. We pray that this pandemic's grip may ease and one day end. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for an end to the culture of death in all its forms throughout our country and throughout the world, that every human life will be protected and respected from the moment of its conception to the moment of its natural death. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember all who suffer from any disease, any strife, any illness. We pray for all those who to this day may be alone or despairing or seeking friendship. For all those of whatever need they have, may those needs be met according to the holy will of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a few moments of silence, my friends, let us recall those who have died. May they all rest in eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your great mercy and love, hear and answer our prayers, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The humble spirit and contrite hearts may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Father, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me of all my sins. My friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. So with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the everlasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled it with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into the one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and me, your unworthy servant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the hall of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we commend humbly to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, God you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe unto eternity.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, thank you for joining me for prayer on this third Sunday in Lent. And I want to remind you that you are all very much invited to join our diocesan novena in honor of St. Joseph. It begins this coming Wednesday, March 10th at 7 p.m. And I ask you to access the novena through our diocesan website. The, the button to, to uh, hit is going to be very clearly evident there. And we will offer the novena for the nights right through March 19th, which is a week from Friday, which is the Solemnity of St. Joseph, husband of Mary. And that'll be the day of the consecration of the diocese to St. Joseph, to his intercession. So I look forward to seeing you at the novena. I will be opening it up on March 10th, and I look forward to praying with you then. We bow our heads to the Lord. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful and in your kindness. Grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Together we pray. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.